Julio, welcome back to Dolphins United, the platform for Dolphins. You heard me. We are here. This is the preview of the biggest game of the year so far. It's us versus the big bad bullies, the Bills at our house, one o'clock in the sweltering heat. Can Miami finally beat the bullies? And get it done for the first time in seven games will be the question. Okay? There's going to be a lot to say if we can beat this team this week. If we do what we are set out to do, the narrative changes. For the team, for the coach. And for Tua, providing Tua has a good game. But this game right here is a measuring stick game. And we're going up against not a good team, but a great team in the Bills. They're deep. They are number uh, um, They're Well, let me not put a number on it. It's too early in the season for all that. They are... A top offense and a top defense over the last few years. They have depth. Uh, they can run the football, especially when it comes to uh, adding the quarterback to those totals. Uh, they, they can have explosive plays. They get interceptions. Their front seven is probably the best in the league overall, with linebackers included. It, it's, it's a juggernaut of a team, plain and simple. Miami... Coming off their best win in some years, outside of the Miami Miracle, which that was a great game, but this one was even better. Uh, did it in the fourth quarter, okay? Through three quarters, they looked pedestrian, and then they turned it on in the fourth quarter. What does that mean? That means that the Bills' leads aren't that safe, all right? They're probably a little more safe because they have a better defense, and let's just be honest, but... The Miami Dolphins can put up 28 points in a quarter. Like, they, they've proven that. If they need to put up 28 points in a quarter, they can do it. Why not start the game out like that? Okay? So, we're live. Pretty much. All right? We're live. It's like Steph Curry when he passes half court. He can pull from anywhere. That's us right now. Like, we literally can pull from anywhere. You need to be ready. Because if we pass half court, we can pull. All right? So, I love it. That's the type of offense you want to have, that scary offense where you can boom, 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 and next thing you know, you're down 21 like Kansas City used to do for so many years and like the Bills are doing now to us, all right? Boom, 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 and then next thing you know, the game is blown out of proportion. Kind of, like I said, I liken it uh, to Golden State, for example. They hit four threes in a row, and they can do it. You're down 12 points, and, and you're demoralized. All right, or you're down 15 points or 18 points because they already had a lead and you're demoralized. Like, that's it, the game's over because they was up six and then boom, 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 boom. And then now the game is 18 points and you, you need a timeout. So we have those capabilities. And we have another thing on our side as well, but it's still going to be tough, all right? And that other thing that we have on our side for this game is injuries. Boy, do they have him. Dane looks like he's not going to be able to play. <clears throat> uh, Boyer is going to play, it seems. But Micah Hyde is not going to play. Phillips, Jordan Phillips, our old uh, uh, Dolphin, he's not going to be able to play. And he's shown up big these first two weeks after having that fight with uh, Josh Allen in, in um, training camp. Looks like it made him better. I mean, he, he's always had the dog now. and He's always been a nasty, fast, a feisty guy. Uh, I remember a few years back, he fought with some of the Bills players So uh, when he was on our team. So, I mean, he, he's a feisty guy. All right? Um, so I don't think he needed any more feistiness for all, for, for, uh, all I know. But anyway, he's out. And Ed Oliver is out. What does that mean? That means that there's a kink in the armor. That means that the defense is not going to be as strong. Is that an excuse? No. 
we have guys out too. Maybe not as many, maybe not as prominent, but we got guys out, okay? It is what it is. We all got to suit up on Sunday regardless. So next man up, all right? That's it. On offense, they're getting back Gabe Davis, so they should be fine. They should be able to put up points. If it's a shootout, it's a shootout. That's fine. If both defenses can't stop each other, let the best man win. Hopefully, we got more bullets than y'all. That's all it is. You know, like, no excuses. I don't want to hear because they have a prolific offense. I don't want to hear, oh, it's because of our defense. Where your offense at? Because our defense ain't that good either. You see, we put we let up 38. So, miss us. All right? No excuses if we win this game. I wanted to say that. Because there's a few more other things that I have to get off my chest about this game. If we win, I don't want to hear no excuses. All right? But can we win? Aha. Aha. Some of y'all know that from coming to America. Hopefully most of y'all. But anyway, um, can we win this game? Whoo. Loaded question. We can win this game. 100 percent will we will answer that in a little bit um, a little bit later but how can we win this game i would like to answer that question right now now i told y'all in preseason not preseason training camp or preseason was one of the two that i was going to do a video if it made sense about how we can beat the buffalo bills and some things i had seen that kind of led you to believe that if you did this or that versus the Buffalo Bills, you gave yourself the best chance to win based on how I thought we were going to be playing this year. Now, I thought we were going to be a 20-point a game, run the football heavy type team, okay? So I saw some things that we could do to win a close game against the Bills, a low-scoring game. Not a high-scoring game. Well, since last week, things have changed just a little bit because now we've shown and proven that we can score with the best of them because we have a Tyreek Hill on our team. That changes the dynamic. That changes the scenario just a little bit. But I'll still give you some of these keys that will help us win this game if things don't go right for us on offense as it did against the Ravens. And I don't expect us to put up 42, but I, I expect now that we could put up at least 28 points where we couldn't really do that in the past without playing catch up in the game already being over. I.e. the game against Buffalo, Tua's first game against Buffalo, his rookie season, where we actually put up like 20 something points uh, but it, it was like 20-something to 50. So the game was already out of the balance. It, it, so we could put up 28 points in meaningful minutes this time, I believe, all right, rather than it being garbage time minutes where they're letting up scores. <clears throat> well, I'm pretty sure uh, Ravens thought it was garbage time minutes too, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, here's how you give yourself the best chance to beat this team. And it beat Josh Allen, okay? One, you got to keep him on the sideline. Too many times in previous games against the Buffalo Bills, we were three and out, three and out, three and out, six and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. We can't do that against the Buffalo Bills. We want to win this game, we got to be at least 40% from the uh, um, third down and fourth down conversion, okay? At least 40%. If we're not 40%, think about us being in trouble for this game because we need to keep the ball out of his hands. It's simple, all right? I'm not giving you anything that's rocket science, all right? Nothing that you can't figure out for yourself, but I'm doing the work for you, all right? Just in case you didn't go look. Third downs have been atrocious for us. We can't continue to do that for one. It gives the ball right back to them for two. If you're doing a three and out, did you get points? No. All right. So we can't be having three and outs or six and outs. We can't do that. We need to have sustained drives, which we've been able to do for the most part. We need to have sustained drives and those 
our drives need to end in points. Number two leads us right into that. When you having these sustained drives, you need to get down into the red zone. You need to score touchdowns. We've been doing an excellent job of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. We need to continue that against a really good defense because they ain't the Ravens. All right? We need to get down there. We need to put up touchdowns. That's number two. Those are the only two I have for you on offense. Everything else is defense, all right? By the way, well, I'll say this last thing for the offense. When it comes to sustained drives, we need to be able to run the football. We're not talking about passing the ball to sustain drives. We're talking about being able to run the football. Uh, we run the football against them. That means we're eating up clock, all right? We're eating up clock, and we need this game to go as fast as possible. We need to be the fastest game of the week. Like the first game of the week of the year was for us against the Patriots, where we fin pretty much finished like five minutes for everybody else. This game needs to be kind of like that. All right. If we're able to run the football also, what does it do to their defense? It makes their defense tired in that sweltering heat. Hopefully it's hot. My God, please be hot. Please be 90 to 100 plus. All right. We're going to need every little bit. We can get. We already have some injuries on our side. We need the weather to be on our side as well. They're going to be in the darker colors, red or blue, whichever they want to pick. I don't care. We'll be in our whites, hopefully. Our throwback whites. If you're listening, Miami, put us in our throwback, all white throwback whites. Please, please, for this game. Because when we wear the throwbacks, it helps us out a little bit. It gives us some good juju somewhere. I, I don't understand it, but it works. Wear those. All right, but anyway, keeps them on the uh, on field, helps them get more tired. We need to be able to run the football, sustain the drives, and make sure we're converting on third down and make sure we convert in the red zone. Touchdowns, not field goals. We give ourselves a really good chance to win because we have not been able to do any of those things the last seven games, okay? All right, defensively, if we turn this game into a Josh Allen needs to throw game and he can't run because they're that far down, we win. I don't see how the Buffalo Bills beat the Dolphins if we get out to a fast start and they now have to throw the ball to win. It's not. That he can't do it, meaning throw the football, because he is leaps and bounds better than his rookie and second year. He is a great quarterback now. Like he passing the ball, just passing the ball, not just who he is, arm angles, arm talent, none of that. I'm not even talking about that. Passing the ball, accuracy, anticipation. He's a great quarterback at that now. He has changed his mechanics. He's, he's done some great things to be accurate and anticipate. And he has a gun for an arm, a cannon, an absolute cannon to get that ball there with that pinpoint accuracy and anticipation. So we're not talking about that, okay? When I'm not saying that he's, he's not that good a passer. What I am saying is that if we make them one-dimensional, we don't have to worry about the run. But we can pin our ears on the pass. It plays to our benefits and our strengths because if they're able to run the football on us and all over the um, place on us then we're going to leave him open on a lot of uh, on a lot of runs okay so if we can shut the run down get out to a fast start force him to pass to beat us we can at least give ourselves a chance to get some type of interception or something all right that's one we haven't been able to do this. So everything I'm giving you right now are things that we have not been able to do as a team. We need to find a way to make him one-dimensional. If we can do that by stopping the run, not letting up on the run, and then getting out to a fast start on offense, we give ourselves a really good chance. I don't see them beating us if we can do that. All right, for example, just an example I'm throwing out there. Let's say we went up 21 to 6. And we're starting the second half. I find it very tough for them to beat us in that situation, in that scenario. Because now all you can do is pass. You can't run the football. Bet. 
we're going to make sure that we zero the crap out of you and beat you that way, or we're going to force you to get the ball out of your hands fast and just uh, 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 rally to the football. You know, that's all I would worry about. I wouldn't worry about anything. It's not that they can't score, but it just makes it a little bit tougher for them. All right? That's what we need to get them. We need to see them be able to come back from that rather than us trying to do it. All right? Another thing. When you get back there, same thing I said last week with Lamar Jackson, which we could never get back there. We didn't get any sacks or any pressures against them, uh, against Baltimore. But against Buffalo, we need to get pressures, and we need to get back in there, and we need to hit him, and we need to hit him often. And when we get our hands on him, we need to bring him down. We're talking about Ben Roethlisberger 2.0. He's entirely... Hard to bring down, almost darn near impossible to bring down. If we get our hands on him, we have to bring him down. Because if he extends plays, especially moving to his right, he's going to kill us. Moving to his left, it's not as good, but he can still kill us because he has a gun. But moving to his right, my goodness, it's it's over. All right, If we get him moving out to his right, it's over. We need to be disciplined. We need to stay in our lanes. Phillips. It's on you, bro. All right? You need to stay in your lane. You need to play uh, um, discipline, uh, um, gap assignment football, and you need to make sure you're in the place you're supposed to be at and not, allow, not allowing him to get outside of you. And then use your speed to when you have a chance to get him, you bring him down. All right? We need him to do it. I would make uh, um, Tyndall active for this game. One of the subscribers or one of the commenters in the um, comment section mentioned Tyndall playing. That's a good one. He should play. And, uh, of course, Baker, that's about all he could do at this point. So he needs to be on it. All right? Those three, they're all, they all have speed. Those are the three guys I would count on to keep an eye on. Um, on um, Dang, I lost the man's name already. Josh Allen. All right? And I don't know how because he's been the Dolphins' daddy for I don't know how long now. All right, so hopefully we can put a stop to this. This is the things we need to do to finally win the game, okay? In forcing them to be one-dimensional, we allow ourselves to create more turnovers, interceptions because he's pressing, uh, fumbles, things like that, all right? So there's a method to the madness. We make them one-dimensional. Hopefully throwing more leads to more interceptions, more times for the offense to be out there to put up more points. We also need to uh, find a way to get um, hits on them, all right, to make them a little uneasy back there, which is going to be almost impossible to do anyway. But that's one of the ways we give ourselves a really good chance with the offense doing everything I said that they need to do, um, giving ourselves the best chance to win this game Possibly going away. All right. Do we need to do those things to win? No. But if we want to win convincingly, that's what we need to do. All right. We need to do that to win convincingly. Now, let's go back to the question I asked. Are the Dolphins going to win the football game? Because we know we can. But we don't know we will. And truthfully, we won't know we will till Sunday. But. I have to put out a prediction. That's why I do this. So, the Dolphins, who are hosting the Bills, will lose the game. All right? I already know. Y'all started typing already. Give me a second. All those things I mentioned that the Dolphins need to do. I don't see how they get it done, okay? Uh, it's not that you necessarily need it. I just don't feel like we're on their level yet. I said last year, and I'm a man of my word, that I will not pick this team, the Dolphins, to win against Buffalo until I see it. I have to stick to that, all right? Because people that watch me could bring that back to my attention that I said that. It's on record. I'm going to stick with that. However, 
Even though I feel like the Dolphins are going to lose, I don't feel like the Dolphins are going to get drummed like they have in the past. So what does that say? That says that, and I got one more thing to say to that that just came to mind, which is hilarious to me. That says that I believe this game will go as follows. 28-24. We lose the game. 28-24. It's respectable. They get the W. We play a close game. I don't believe in more victories. But I thought if last week we lost by the last second field goal, that was going to be a good more victory. If we lose this way, as long as we're not playing catch up, and even if we're playing catch up, really, you only lose by four points, I'll take it as a moral victory. All right. It keeps the Bills on our minds. All right. Uh, it, it keeps us on their minds like, dang, they, you know, they almost got us. All right. So for the next game, we got to make sure that we bring it because they almost, they almost got us. All right. It keeps it like that for us. Okay. And, and that's what we want. And then we want to be like, woo, we almost got them. All right. We almost got them this time. It ain't like years past. Things like that. Now, I believe McDaniel's going to put up the best strategy to attack those um, um, rookie corners. I believe that the offense is going to do whatever they want for the most part when it comes to wide receivers. The problem I have is the line. All right. First game, we let up some sacks to Judon. This old line is even better. Yes, they don't have certain guys in the interior of the line. But when it comes to their rushers, Epinenza, uh, Epinenza, whatever, however you say his name, and Russo, when it comes to those guys, they get after the quarterback. All right? And they ain't the only ones that's coming. Milano's coming. They might even bring Edmonds. Two of the better um, um, linebackers in the league. One for running, which is Edmonds. One against the pass, which is Milano. They have... Great linebacker, linebacker play. Great rush play. Von Miller, I forgot about him. And I don't know how. He's the best one of them all. And he opens it up for Russo and Epinenza to get going even more now. All right? So we got a problem when it comes to that. And that's why I feel like even though I believe things will be schemed up well for us to get points, those guys are going to wreck the game in some, in some form or fashion. And we find a way to lose, all right? Just not a blowout like it used to be. So we find a way to lose close, and I'm cool with that. I'll take that. Another reason why we're going to lose this game, okay? Apparently, according to, you know, somebody that did some research on Reddit, we, ain't been a, we haven't beat a team that doesn't have an O in their last name at quarterback, all right? In the, a quarterback that does not have an O in his last name against the Dolphins hasn't lost. We've only beaten all of the quarterbacks that have an O in their last name. That's it. Since the beginning of last year, we have that streak going. If you don't have an O in your last name, you're losing to the Miami Dolphins. If you have, uh, uh, if you have an O, sorry, in your last name, you're losing to the Miami Dolphins. If you don't have an O in your last name, you're beating the Miami Dolphins. Josh Allen, is there an O in his last name? No, they're going to win the game, all right? We're losing games by vowels now, all right? And, that, and that's, just, that's just what it is, all right? That's, that's all the technical analysis. I should have just did that. If I would have just told y'all that, then you would have understood why I got us losing the game, okay? We don't care about nothing else. Do you have the O, um, o as part of the vowels in your last name? No, you won the game. Yes, you lost. Sorry. All right? It is what it is. There go stats for you. I'll holler at y'all after the game. Please go ahead and put in the comment section what you feel like this game is going to be. How you feel in your heart? How you feel in your mind? Is your heart, are your heart and your mind aligned? Okay? Because some part of me in my heart feels like we're going to pull this game out. But I got to go with my gut and my brain, which is telling me don't pick them yet because they haven't beat this team in the last seven years and they've all been, for the most part, blowouts. All right, so I'm not going to pick them yet. If they win this game, next game, I'll pick them. All right, I'll pick them. I don't got no problem picking them if it merits that. 
but I can't pick them yet. They got to show me. I'll holler at y'all after the game. Fins up. Oh,